Hello and welcome. I'm Henry from Hamburg and I'm one of the co-founders of the open source project uh, Central. And um, yeah, uh, beside the open source, of course, we uh, deliver professional services uh, offerings around the code and beyond. So what is Central? Central is a Django server um, that, and I have to switch the slides if that works. Yeah. Wow. Um, Central is a Django server that allows um, the management of OS Query, Google Center, and Monkey, in addition to tracking inventory from multiple sources. And the prime goal uh, we're trying to solve is to consolidate the inventory site and the events from many sources into one unified location. And in essence, um, yeah, this is built as a modular um, approach or with a modular structure, and it's intended to work in complementary to um, the existing solutions that are out there. So we may have some, some tools that you already have in another form, so you don't need that. We have other tools that um, or other modules that you may be interested in. So some distinguished features is uh, of Central is that we have completely overhauled our Santa and OS query implementations. And um, mainly this is all about uh, working with configuration as code um, for Santa and OS query for the Santa rules and the query packs and, and that stuff. And we further extend this to the other modules that we have. And um, we not only, especially for Santa, we're not only supporting the basic, but also some advanced Santa specific features, which is um, MTLS. And we also have the HTTP API that allows for managing the rules and the policies, but also an endpoint for ingesting the file information so that the metadata is already in the database before the policies are set. Um, and across all the different use cases, um, we mainly enrich everything that we get in terms of inventory or in terms of events. Um, we enrich this um, uh, from uh, yeah, the, those various sources with more context and then send this to a data store. And some implementations that have been uh, done recently is that we've been replacing um, for a larger customer, a complete Simeon um, monkey environment. And so now they're running monkey completely managed um, as part of Central in a cloud deployment. And this is complementary to their MDM, for example. And as the complete feature set of Central is very extensive, um, uh, I try to keep it concise. Um, two more highlights. Um, so uh, on the identity provider side for single sign-on, we're having realms and we use this for the role-based access and um, also some enrollment features I, I present later on. And with all those different um, yeah, data endpoints, um, we have a flexible tagging um, that accompanies um, the functionality with some actions um, and alerting. So how do I get to know more detail what Central can do for me? So the best is of course to um, uh, start looking at the code and that's what we do. And here we have um, uh, the various open source customizations that are publicly available. So um, we have Jamf and Jamf Protect integrations um, so that you can get inventory from Jamf or the Jamf Protect agent can um, directly send uh, events to Central. Um, we have Monolith, which is managing Monkey. We have Monkey Events, which is more only the Monkey inventory that is uh, returned to Central. We have Okta events. We have, of course, OS Query, Puppet, Santa, um, ticketing systems. Xnumon is a nice tool, but it's uh, almost a kernel extension. So it's no longer maintained, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so that is what we have on, on the module side in, in the public code base. And um, there's also different backend stores that we're supporting. And um, this is um, something from the code that we support Azure Log Analytics, um, Datadog, Elasticsearch. That's what we've started with about six years ago. Yumio, 
uh, Kinesis, Splunk, and, and all of that. And just to see that the implementation, um, it's, it's not that much code. It's like 120, 150 sites, uh, lines of code. And of course, GitHub gave us a nice alert today. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you want to further um, want to evaluate and deploy um, at Central, so a, a good starting point is the documentation um, where we have pre-built images for AWS and GCP, and of course, instructions how to, um, yeah, work with that. And um, I think it makes sense to hop over to the interface. Um, let's start with the machines here and the inventory. This is a demo um, setup that we just kicked off uh, beginning of this week. Um, there's two computers enrolled here um, and also uh, parallels Windows VM. And here you see, okay, this is OS Query, this is MDM, this is MDM, this is OS Query, this is Monkey. So a single computer is enrolled from different sources. And of course, how the sources report um, may vary, but you get the full picture here. Then we have a nice drill in feature here that you can click and very quickly get to that point. Um, we also have a nice filter capability and I have to just um, copy paste some stuff here so that I don't type wrong here. So if you use the filter, um, you can insert that here. You can just um, now get all those different versions of Chrome. And this is represented in the URL. So even if you extend this to much more tiles, um, you can preserve this in the URL. Of course, you can export the results as XLSX or zip, and this is possible to use um, via the API as well. All right, so um, if you look for a principal user, and search for that, oops. Maybe, ah, interesting. This used to work before, however, demo gods. Um, let's go to this one. Here with Santa, um, yeah, uh, I changed the configuration. And uh, usually we, we have a primary user here um, and I messed this up for, uh, yeah, short before we started the demo. Um, but you can see this later on in a screenshot. Um, we also have our own MDM implementation and I will show a bit more about this later as well. Um, this is the reporting from Monkey. This is the reporting from OS Query. Uh, you get the apps from Monkey in this case. Um, and we can use OS Query to report on apps as well. And uh, then on each machine, you have different kind of events and there's a rich event stream. And of course you can filter that. Uh, and let's look at the Santa events. And here you see, okay, it's, Santa blocked some stuff for a user called John Appleseed. And um, yeah, so you can click on those buttons here and hop over and see the same events uh, in the data store. Uh, right now, Elastic and Datadog are configured here and they can work in parallel. All right, so that's what we have here on the inventory side. There's much more detail. So the groups, for example, is if we are connecting to a Jamf server, Jamf server has groups and we are representing the groups in Central and every change that happens on the uh, group side. And, and Jamf is an event that, that Central will track and write into the event audit trail. And we can have different business units. And of course uh, we can work with tags and all of that. We have the concept of probes and what probes are either for the monkey installs um, and there you can find some events. Uh, I did earlier um, install the GitHub desktop and Mozilla Firefox. And this is, let's say it's, it's just a probing in the event stream. And um, we also have the Santa blocked events and the probes, if you want, can be imported from a feed. Um, so in this case, oops, it's a JSON that is hosted somewhere out there. I can click on this here and just create a, um, a new probe from there and import it. And um, when you're 
just importing that and the source has changed, of course, um, you need to review it and then update the code just in case you're using that feature. All right, um, formerly other probes have been much more extensive here. And, um, but this has moved to the setup right now um, while we overhauled OS query and Santa. And of course, in the future, we will shuffle around the menus a bit more. Um, we're still in the V8.0.8.0 version. So yeah, okay. So one module we could look into um, would be OS query. Um, so we have different OS query packs that you can um, work on. And of course, here's some queries. You can edit those and change some settings here. And, um, but I mentioned already that you can use the API and this is a quick demo that I'll one here. Um, so let's assume this is a query pack and exactly the pack we're looking at is the extra query pack, which has five scheduled queries. And we are changing um, the number of queries. So, and we could check this in our Git and kick off a automated pipeline. In this case, I just run a script, um, which pushes that um, uh, JSON file towards the API and just doing that. And you see the query results two have been created and um, five have been present. I update here and now it's um, updated on the central side as well. And this works item potently. So you can run over and over this um, mechanism. And so central represents what you have here in those files. If you have a pack that could be used in um, one or more configurations, um, this is uh, to be set somewhere else in the OS query uh, setup. Um, then you have the queries, which is, um, they are sorted by the packs, um, but of course you can um, create a query here from scratch. So um, the packs are, let's say more like a preset library um, that, that you could use. And of course, um, there's the query runs. And here's some examples. Uh, um, here we have the ATC and uh, I earlier today ran that and you see, okay, there's, there's the results um, returned from a specific uh, table that is queried um, via OS query from, from just reading the contents of a um, SQL database. And of course you could export that to uh, different formats. And if you want to rerun that um, query, you could do so. And you just relaunch it. You can say, okay, run it for one hour. You can uh, limit that to tags. You can shard it and you can limit that to serial number. And um, yeah, over time we should see that uh, the run 20 will be updated. We return to that in a moment. And here we have one configuration. And of course um, you could update that, just uh, change your options here. Um, you can add the different um, file integrity monitoring or the ATCs that you have. And of course you can add the pack and also limit the pack to a different tag or limit it to more than one tag. Um, we're not doing that here. So a, a tag means that this only applies to the computers that have the same tag set. So it's a kind of grouping mechanism. Um, enrollment can be done from the configuration uh, via, uh, for uh, Apple with, with a script uh, for, um, or no, we pre-built a package here, but inside is a script. Um, this is a script for the Linux enrollment. This is a PowerShell script. And yeah, and you see here that we can manage that automatically within Central um, with Monkey. And this section may be interesting to look at. 
So um, Monolith, we've presented that, I think, is it four years ago? I think it's four years ago at um, MDOYBR. Um, and this is the monkey catalogs. And right now we're having like um, 78 packages in here. And um, then we tie that to a manifest and the manifest can be uh, having some automated uh, uh, monkey managed enrollments for OS query or even the monkey reporting. And um, then we have the sub manifests and in the sub manifests um, you are organizing repository, uh, repository packages or scripts or configuration profiles. That's the legacy of course um, that no longer works well due to the changes of Apple. And yeah, so if we are looking into Monolith further, um, we're on the sub-manifest level. And if we update the catalog, everything is hosted on, on S3 in this case. And we provide uh, signed links to the, to the endpoints. And again, um, we can use um, the API to update um, our catalog. And um, now we should have now one more package info, apparency. Apparency is new. Um, so we could go and add that to a sub manifest and just say, okay, that new apparency should be an optional install and just add that. All right. So if we now go to the endpoint, we do see, oh, Santa is something is blocking something here. We will look into this later on. And um, let's start the manage software install. Oops. See, you know, we run the updates. And if the demigods are good. Oops, yeah, there's a parency. Um, icon is missing, but of course we could install that. All right, um, but we've seen that Santa is blocking um, the, the new applications in this case because Santa is running in lockdown mode. And um, what can be done to, um, what can be done to allow uh, apparency. First, we can use the API and um, just grab Santa file info and uh, just upload that file info. And that's what we've done. So everything that Santa can report on the command line, um, the Santa CTL file info, we filter by the executables, um, is now uh, in the database of Central. And in this case, um, if we leave Monkey and hop over to Santa, Santa is here, then we can um, see it's in lockdown and we can manage the rules here and we can add a certificate rule. Or wait, well, let's go with a binary rule. And we see, okay, we can create a, um, and this, this has uh, two different, um, uh, two different um, binaries embedded. So we need to um, allow both binaries to run or what we can do, um, we could go and create a certificate rule. And I think it's mothers, oops, uh, Democrats again, so. Mozilla should be in there. Uh, might be me screwing up the demo. However, we've seen that that preloading the data um, has worked for the binaries. Um, it's one more step in here to um, do this for the, um, uh, not only the executables, I need to run this file info ingest for the certificate again. 
all right, we see here that that certain um, rules have been set. Some are blocked, uh, some are allowed, some are tied to primary users. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so um, in maintaining the rule sets um, in, in Git as well, um, this helps um, to um, preload uh, everything that is needed uh, for Santa to even work in lockdown mode. So if we look here again, we've seen earlier that I think Dropbox is not allowed to run. And we see um, we want to change that. How can we do that? So someone has uh, created a commit um, and, do, 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 uh, and added the two organizations. And um, for that commit, we're merging it and then GitHub action kicks in. Uh, need to wait a moment. Hope for the demo gods. Merge job. Ooh. So back in here, we have 33 rules. Um, two more GitHub and Dropbox have been added. Over time, that, um, yeah, uh, Santa will sync. We uh, will force that. But before doing so, um, I could, as the end user, I could request, please, please unlock that. And this is a form, everything is filled in, the host name of the device, uh, the serial, and of course I can request more information from the user here. They post that and um, yeah, I, then the information could be converted into an updated rule set. So. Uh, of course, with a peer review. Now we're syncing because the rules are already on the central site. Uh, oops, and how's it going, Dropbox? And seems to work, no longer blocked. And GitHub desktop seems to start. No longer blocked. All right, that's the short rundown um, on that. Let's go back to the slides. This, um, yeah, so deploying it, um, of course, we have pre built images, but um, for large organizations, they may not be surface. They are nice to start with. Um, we also have. Docker, uh, but that's more for you know certain kind of um, uh, deployments, and this is a, a structure how a GCP um, uh, yeah deployment could look like, um, where the endpoints are um, hitting a load balancer, TCP load balancer. We have uh, uh, multiple instances of the uh, central web instance. We have one or more workers. We have a monitoring instance, and then we use the native services from Google Cloud or, or AWS or um, even uh, Azure. Um, for people who contact us, um, we provide Terraform deployments um, so that we help those uh, onboarding um, Central in this larger deployment. And then you uh, request uh, what kind of data store you want to use. And um, yeah, so there's always every, every customer, every organization is a bit different in the setup. And um, yeah. So that's how the cloud deployment um, looks like. And of course, um, everything is open source. So um, you could uh, help us on GitHub. Um, and uh, oh, yeah, but you can also engage us for customer engineering support, which is this address. And that's the Twitter handle. And, but there's one more thing. So, I've already shown that, um, but I want to present um, the current uh, state of MDM, um, which uh, we see above is the log of the central endpoint. In the middle, we have the, of course, the Mac and rolling. And below, we see um, our ident gateway, which is a um, 
SCAP service that allows to reach out to different kinds of PKI that are not exposed to the outside world. So I'm starting the demo. That's a, you know, everybody has seen that MDM enrollment. Um, above you see now that there's the check-ins coming in um, after the Octo authentication. John Appleseed is enrolling here and you see, okay, SCAP operation, the MDM profile is installed um, with a SCAP certificate. Um, the check-ins happen and uh, then a device certificate will be installed short after. And that's what you see down there. That's happening right now. And the enrollment is finishing. And yeah, so John Appleseed has to provide a password. That's what he's doing here. Can't change his name to Tim Cook. And now the Aqua session is starting. And again, we see that there's check-ins happening over there. And we see, oh, some activity uh, on the PKI side, on the SCEP server side. And um, yeah, so now the Aqua session is there. We look at the different profiles. And you see the profiles are installed. This is a user cert on the user channel. This is a device cert on a device channel. These are the Santa payloads. And in the back, we're switching um, uh, the configuration. So we're adding more profiles here. Um, and this is like the blueprints work in, um, in the Apple configurator. So I'm, we're looking here. Oh no, first we're double checking the certificates in the keychain. Private key is only on the device. That's the, um, yeah, the system certificates. Uh, I did mess up this because this <laughs> goes usually to the um, user certificate uh, and that's what we look at next. Right, so we see the common name, the serial number of the computer. So this is tied into the certificate. And then we have down there the subject alternative names, uh, John Appleseed and the, um, yeah, also the email address. And this is the MDM profile. So now we're changing the, um, settings and adding more profiles. We're logging out. See monkey setting is installed and we see some other payloads are installed to secure and harden the computer. And we're logging out. We do see that the login prompt has changed and we can log in again and story continues. It's what the current state of uh, our MDM is looking like. However, during this week, um, Apple has presented some new stuff and that's what we're working on as well. Unfortunately, um, yeah, we learned that it's only for iOS. So yeah, so declarative MDM. Um, this is the current state of declarative MDM in our implementation with an iPad. Um, also, you see here the blueprints. Um, we see that it basically works. Um, here you see uh, that it starts with a um, check-in um, on the declarative management. Um, you see that the activation is happening and the configuration uh, happens and, and the knowledge uh, exchange happens and everything is uh, yeah, explained pretty well in the session at WWDC. And the end result is looking like this. Um, also similar to the screenshot that we've seen. And yeah, 